Many beer styles possess rich, zesty notes of orange flavour and aroma, and yet they contain not a trace of actual orange fruit. Instead, those characteristics are derived solely by specific hop additions and biotransformation during fermentation. So, let's explore my top five favourite hops for adding orange characteristics to beer, and see how well those hops perform in Brewlosophy beer evaluation surveys. Which hop will be my number one? This episode is sponsored by Delta Brewing Systems. More on them in a bit. Many beer styles benefit from fresh orange aromas and flavors in American IPA and Pale Ale, a citrus characteristic that can help complement the bitterness of the beer. Or in a Belgian wit and a wheat ale, the light crisp base of the beer is a wonderful backbone for orange flavors and aromas. And in some of those styles, Actual parts of the orange fruit are commonly used, so orange peel or orange zest can be added during the boil or fermentation, or even straight up orange puree can be added. But we're going to focus specifically on the hops. Now, as with any hop addition, the biggest flavor and aroma contributions come from late addition hops. So hops added near the end of the boil or during a whirlpool or even on the cold side as a dry hop. And that's because these late additions minimize the boiling off of delicate aromatic compounds, allowing the hop's essential oils to be better preserved. So let's get into the first hop, number five, and that is Idaho 7. I think of this one as the orange marmalade hop. It's the first hop released from Jackson Farms just outside of Boise, Idaho. So there's a clue to its name. Now the hop is purported to have a zesty tangerine flavor that yes, is reminiscent of marmalade, which is no bad thing in my book. Other reported flavors include guava, apricot, and a touch of pine. Around half of the hop oils come from myrcene and it's a high alpha acid hop too, around 13 to 15%. Now here at Brewlosophy, we host a series called The Hop Chronicles, where we make a beer exclusively with a single hop and Idaho 7 was no exception. Philosophy contributor Mike Neville brewed an American pale ale with a pretty simple malt bill and added nothing but Idaho 7 hops. Idaho 7 as the bittering hop, Idaho 7 as the late addition hops, and Idaho 7 during a dry hop. In total, this five gallon batch of beer saw 170 grams of Idaho 7 added at various stages. Now, when the beer was ready, it was served to 20 people who were blinded to the hop variety used, and then they were asked to complete a survey. And that's what you see here, the average aroma and flavor ratings for each descriptor. Now, the Hop Chronicles survey doesn't specifically ask about orange, but it does include the citrus descriptor, which is described in the survey as being orange, lemon, lime, grapefruit, tangerine, and clementine. So we'll play close attention to that one, uh, and also tropical fruit being a secondary indicator as well. And look, Idaho 7 scores nearly off the charts for citrus in terms of both aroma and flavor. Participants were also asked to rate the pungency or the strength of the hop, and it scored highly here too. In tasting his own beer, Mike said that he perceived this beer as having big notes of orange citrus and pineapple in both the flavor and aroma. And he said, this is one of the better single hop beers he's tasted since started brewing, for the Hop Chronicles. High praise indeed, and that's why Idaho 7 places in the top five in this list. Hop number four is Mandarina Bavaria. This is a aroma variety said to impart a blend of noble and citrus characteristics to beer, and being the daughter of Cascade, the citrus component of Mandarina Bavaria isn't necessarily surprising, though this newer hop is known for contributing unique notes of tangerine rather than say just grapefruit. Now myrcene makes up 71% of total hop oil and it was Brewlosophy contributor Paul Amico who brewed our pale ale version of an all Mandarina Bavaria hop schedule. The survey data from 36 participants showed that citrus scored strongly but more prominently for aroma than flavor. Interestingly nobody explicitly identified tangerine though in the post-survey conversations. So if you want an all-out orange bomb, this hop might not deliver, but when it comes to adding fruity aromatic notes, this is a solid place to start. Number three is the Haitian god of agriculture himself, Azaka. Like Idaho 7, it can be considered a dual-purpose hop with alpha acids in the 14 to 16% range. 
Yakima Valley Hops recommend using Azaka in the Whirlpool after Flame Out to maximize its juicy flavors and its aromas. Again, it was Paul Amico on Brewing Duties creating our Azaka Pale Ale, and he was specifically using Lupomax Hops, which is a concentrated Azaka variety, making it ideal for our evaluation. Now, descriptors associated with Azaka include citrus and tropical fruit and stone fruit, and well, that correlates pretty well here with our results from the 34 people who participated in evaluating this beer. Paul noted a complex blend of citrus, stone fruit, and most prominently tropical fruit, namely pineapple. Now, before we get to my top two, a quick word on today's sponsor, Delta Brewing Systems. Delta Brewing Systems offers some of the lowest prices on stainless steel brewing gear, like the Firm Tank, which in addition to holding 8 gallons or 30 litres of wort, comes with a domed lid to reduce the chances of a messy blow-off. Plus, it can hold up to 2 psi of pressure for closed transfers. Delta Brewing Systems also has their own line of brew kettles, as well as one of the lowest priced all-in-one electric brewing systems out there, and their prices are shockingly low. If you're in the market for legit stainless gear that won't break the bank, do yourself a favor and head over to deltabrewingsystems.com today. Now, number two is Citra. Of course, Citra was going to make the list. Since it's released by the Hop Breeding Company in 2007, Citra has become one of the most lauded hop varieties for its ability to impart beer with citrus and tropical fruit characteristics, while also possessing a pretty solid bittering potential as well, so a dual-purpose hop. Now, much of the big citrus flavor and aroma comes as a result of biotransformation. What's that? Well, biotransformation occurs when yeast interacts with hop compounds during fermentation, and that alters the chemical structure of the hop oils and the terpenes. And citra hops are noted for their higher geranoil content, which is biotransformed by yeast into citronellal, which is known for its citrusy aroma. Now, we tested the Lupamax version of citra, so essentially, this is the version that allows you to achieve similar levels of pungency to regular citra, but means you can add less vegetal matter into the beer. And the 23 people taking our survey reported that prominent citrus aromas were very much present. Brewer Paul said that this beer had everything he expected from a single hop citra pale ale, refreshing citrus with notes of tropical fruit and a fresh and pungent hop character. There is a reason that Citra is so darn popular, but can it be beat? Well, when it comes to adding orange characteristics to beer, I think it can. So my number one hop is the happy accident that is Amarillo. It was discovered in 1990, growing wild in a field of Liberty hops and is now in the top 10 most used hops in the world. It's a dual-purpose hop, offering decent bittering potential with moderately high alpha acid content, but it's aroma and flavor where it shines. Big, sweet citrus flavor, leaning heavily on the orange side of citrus. We've tested Amarillo every which way at Brulosophy, including both the regular and the Lupamax versions in a pale ale, but our most recent data comes from Brulosophy contributor Will Lovell, who brewed an Amarillo pale lager. Uh, that's a simple smash beer using 100% Pilsner malt, and then just enough hops in the schedule to reach 20 IBU of bitterness. Now, I've brewed a few of these Hop Chronicle Pale Lagers before, and given the relatively small hop edition, they often come out a little bit muted. So, would the orange characteristics still shine through to blinded tasters in this beer? Well, Will presented the beer to 26 participants, and here's what they said. Amarillo brings notable citrus perceptions to both aroma and flavor. Very, very high scores. Even at 20 IBU, this hop reliably presents orange characteristics. It's my favorite orange hop, and I always keep some on hand. So, that's my list. But am I missing something? Is there a different hop you'd include? And do you have a different number one? Let me know in the comments. Now, if you're specifically looking to brew a hazy IPA, I have some recommendations for that, and you can see those in this video here.